Hi everyone, I just really quickly wanted to do one more tutorial on importing files into the Silhouette Studio. You do not have to have the designer edition for any of the tutorials that I have been posting. So just because mine says designer doesn't mean that it works differently with these types of tutorials that I have been posting. The only thing the designer edition is different with is for the rhinestone tool as well as um, the knife tool. But other than that, everything is exactly the same. Now what does matter is different operating systems. So a lot of the comments that I have been receiving about the drag and drop feature not working has been for those using the new Windows 8. I have Windows 7 on my machine. So um, if drag and drop isn't working for you, I'm going to show how to import the files one by one. It's kind of a pain this way, but it will get the files into your Silhouette Studio. So today on Echo Park, their $1 sale is for their mini kit, their mini theme kit called Hello Spring. So I clicked on Hello Spring and it takes you to jessicasprague.com and this sale is for $1 and it includes, um, I think it's like, it's these five papers right here and then 37 elements. The description is down here on this graphic instead of in their description this time. So I went ahead and did that and I downloaded it to my Dropbox. Dropbox is a free service that is a cloud storage so that I never lose my files. Even if my computer crashes, it's going to be in my Dropbox. I can always get to Dropbox through my phone, through my iPad, any way I want to. If you've never heard about it, I'll post the link below and you can check it out for yourself. So I saved the papers and the whole kit here in my folder called Silhouette and then Hello Spring. So you'll see there's two separate folders, one of papers and one of elements. We'll start with the papers first. So you'll see there are five papers in this line. So now we'll go to our Silhouette library. For papers, you always want to add papers into My Patterns. So I'm going to click the plus sign and we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Echo Park Hello Spring. Okay so here it is right here and you'll see everything is blank right there. Now that I've set up my file section it is time to import those papers. You'll notice this section is blank, and so we'll say File, Import to My Library. Now, before I click on that, let me let you know something. We're going to have to do a two-step process here. When we use that feature, it imports into the My Library down here. Then we're going to have to move the file into My Patterns in order to use the papers in the pattern section. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Click on File, Import to My Library. Now, when you go to the section where you have saved your papers, let me show you what it looks like. When you first get your Echo Park collection, it'll look like this. It'll say EPH underscore Hello Spring. When you click on it, it has elements and it has papers. And then you click on it again and it looks blank. Don't worry, your files are in there. You'll notice Silhouette Studio def defaults to the .studio file down here. You'll want to click on your down arrow and select All Files. Now all of your papers will appear. So let's start by importing our first paper. Let's start with this blue one right here and hit OK. It'll ask you if you want to enter any keywords. Um, for example, I may say blue and then I might add another word that says paper. Um, you can be more specific if you want, um, but that's all I'm going to say for this particular one. Artist, 
sometimes here I will go ahead and take the time and write out the manufacturer information, but that's all optional. You don't have to do that. And click OK. All right. So you'll notice it automatically highlights this folder called My Own Designs, and it put that Hello Spring Blue Sky paper in that folder. But that's not where we want it in order to use it with my patterns. We need to move it to the Hello to the Hello Spring file over here. So while it's highlighted in pink, click on it and drag over to Hello Spring. Now, when I click on that, you'll see I have one paper in there. Now we'll repeat this process. I'll walk you through it again. Click on File, Import to My Library, Papers are Blank, switch it to All Files, select the next paper, OK. I'm going to type in Butterfly and Butterflies, just for search purposes. and it imports to my own designs. I don't want it there. I need this to be in my patterns under Echo Park Hello Spring. So I'm going to click and hold, drag it over to Hello Spring. Click on that and you'll see now I have two papers. Now let's repeat this for the other ones. Okay, so now I have all of my papers in here. Now I want to import the elements. The elements I do go ahead and keep within my library. So we want to create a separate section. So we're going down to my library. And then I have a whole section here just for Echo Park. And I'm going to create a new folder called Hello Spring. So now all of the elements I am going to import into this folder down here under My Library. That is separate from the patterns. Remember, My Patterns works with your Fill section, this Fill Pattern section. So as I scroll down, you'll see it's right here. Oops, where'd it go? Echo Park Hello Spring, and that works to fill any of your elements. Now, this area is just for importing specific elements and shapes that you would like to use in your project. So now I'll click File, Import to My Library, and now I'm going to go up to the Elements section. Same thing, Silhouette Studio, we want to switch to All Files. And you'll see we have 37 images to import. So we'll do the same thing and start selecting them. Now again, it will default by putting it into My Own Designs. So instead of leaving this here, I'm going to drag it down to that new folder I created under my library called Hello Spring. And there it is. And now we'll do this for the other elements as well. Okay, so just for now, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and I hope this helped you learn how to use your import feature if you haven't been able to drag and drop. If you have Windows 7, this is how you can drag and drop. Just one more time, I'm going to stay in my Hello Spring folder down here under My Library, and I'm going to push this over to the side. 
Next, I'm going to go back to where all of my files are under Hello Spring and Elements. Push those over to this side. And I usually select up to four items at a time. One, hold down the control key, two, three, and four. Click on the left mouse, um, yeah, on the left mouse button. Drag it all the way over to this white blank area here under Hello Spring. Release your mouse button and you'll see all four of those have been added. So again, for the drop and drag feature in Windows 7, you'll go over to the next ones you want. I usually do not pick more than four at a time, otherwise it seems like it crashes. So I'll select those four, click with the left mouse button, hold it, move it all the way over to the, to the white area. And there we go. There's four more right there. And I'll repeat the process. Okay. So now I just make sure that the number of elements that I had in this folder, it says 37 items matches what I have in this folder, and it says 37 files. So I know I have copied and pasted all of those elements into the area where I was wanting them. Now, as you're going through those, this is the time when you can kind of sort through things that you know you're not going to use. For example, I know I'm not going to use this one here, so you can delete those out, and whatever other ones that you think you would never use you can go ahead and get rid of it this time. So um, that's how you will import those files into your Silhouette Library. Now, another question someone had is how to make these the exact size of an element. So now what I'm gonna do is let's go find a larger element. I'm not going to select this. We're gonna leave that alone for right now. Let's go to say something that we would use as a journaling card. For instance, rainy day. I love this one. So you'll see rainy day is quite a bit bigger than our journaling card. And if I just click on it, it throws it onto the page. And then, yeah, you could do a print and cut, but then you really have some stuff you have to work with here. So the easier way to do it to get it to fit your journaling card is double click on your journaling card. This is the exact size that you want and it already has the cut line for you. So make sure the dimensions are showing. Go back over to Show Library. Click on Rainy Day again. Double click on it. Show Drawing Area. And look at that. It fit that right into that journaling card. Now it's the exact size that you need for your project. Now you can print and cut. See, when I click on the scissors, it's showing this is going to be my cut line. So it's completely set for me and ready to go. So you don't only have to use the elements the way that they're drawn. You can even make other shapes. Say, for example, I want to make a circle out of something that was shaped like a journaling card because you liked the words in it. We can do that very easily. So for example, I'll do a circle. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, and now I have a perfect circle that's just a little over two inches. Now to import my feature, again, I make sure the dimensions show and go back to show library. I really like this little journaling card with the kite on it that says, fly a kite. So I'm going to double click on that and then show drawing area. Now you'll see it put it right into that circle, but we kind of lost the kite. We can change that. Since we used this as a fill feature, we can go over here to the fill pattern window and click advanced options. 
Now we can click on Pan Pattern. You'll see this little bitty X show up here. You'll want to make sure you click exactly on that little X and you can move that kite and center it exactly how you want within that circle. Let's say the words are a little bit too small. It says let's go fly a kite, but that's really tiny. Well, we can change that as well. Under Scale Pattern, click the up arrow, and we can make that as large as we want to make it fill that area. So now you have a print and cut feature that you can use, and you can really do any assortment of things with those elements. But that is how you make them fit into any particular object. The only way it's going to fit is if you double click on your element. If you don't double click on it, then it's just going to throw it on your page. See, if I had gone over here and all I did was double click on this, it's just going to throw the whole thing on my paper. And that is only a print file. Let me show you the difference. See, when I click on my scissors, You'll notice the only red lines I have is this circle and this rectangle. This other kite element that I imported, there's no red line. So all it's going to do is print. Um, so that one won't work that way without throwing it into, by selecting an element like this. And then it will print and cut it perfectly for you. So I hope that answered a few more questions that you had as to um, how to import those into a shape so that you're able to print and cut and also import into your Silhouette Studio. Thank you for watching.